And we're going to be looking in. Second Timothy chapter one verses one through seven. I have a Mother's Day message, but it doesn't just pertain to moms. It pertains to all those that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some points we'll hit on moms, but again it reflects all of us because in life, whether we realize it or not, we're all an influence in the lives of people, especially us as followers of Christ. We are being observed, we are being watched, whether we realize that or not. So the title of this message is Characteristics of Godliness. Characteristics of Godliness. And we're in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. We says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God who I have served with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers day and night. Greatly designed to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your word, Lord God. I pray that you would fill each person here this morning with your Holy Spirit, that they will have a personal encounter with you. I pray, Father God, if there's one here who is not saved, today would be the day of their salvation, of being born again into your kingdom, Lord God. I pray that you would Fill me with your Holy Spirit, that everything I share comes from you, Father. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And we look, when we look at this portion of Scripture this morning, the passage shows the powerful influence that, of course, a mom and a grandmom had on a young boy. You know, we see Timothy, a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, because of his mother and his grandmother influenced him in a mighty way, you know. And in a, in family, the first thing we should do is, as we walk with the Lord, is pass on our faith to family. Pray for the lost ones that we have, whether it's moms, dads, brothers, and sisters. I know Angela and myself had the privilege to lead our parents. To the Lord and, and and such a blessing. Uh, we know today that they're in the kingdom, they're in heaven, praise God, and that's such a comforting thing there. But we see the influence of Timothy through his, his mother and his grandmother. You know, when the family culture diminishes, when the family is when the family doesn't walk with God, we see a culture that fails. And in our world today, in our society today, we see so much of that, that, the, that uh, so many families are not walking with the Lord. We need to get back right with the Lord, you know. And that's where we get that uh, Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear their cry and, and uh, the Lord will come back to them. But as we look at this passage this morning, mothers are important not only the family, but the society as well. No matter what challenges we may face in our relationship with our moms while growing up, she was given to us by God. Your mother was given to you by God. It was an ordained, divine thing. <clears throat> Even in scripture, we find all kinds of mothers and many of them showed characters of godliness. 
Timothy had a godly mother and a godly grandmother who greatly influenced him that he followed in their footsteps of faith. When the Apostle Paul wrote to encourage Timothy as he led the church in Ephesus, he described Timothy's faith heritage this way, I call to remember the sincere faith within you which first dwelt within your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it's in you also as well. In other words, Timothy's mother and grandmother passed down their faith and they taught Timothy, praise God, and he was a follower of Christ. He, of course, was a pastor. His father was not Christian. He was Greek and did not know the Lord, but his mother and grandmother raised him up to know the Lord. Characteristics of a godly mother or characteristics of a godly individual who follows Jesus Christ. As we look again here in reference to moms, because it's Mother's Day, a lot of this also is in reference to all of us. Mothers are characterized in many different ways. Many times they're characterized in their beauty, wealth, or accomplishments. But most important quality of a mom is godliness. This doesn't mean perfection, but she has a quality that serves as an important model for her children and those in the world. Again, we're all an example for those outside of this world here. A godly mother or a godly parent prays and reads the Word of God on a daily basis. That should be one of the main things. It's not an occasional practice but it's become a habit of their life. A godly parent believes scripture and knows its instructions will help them become, if it's a wife, a better wife, a better mother, a better father, a better husband. In fact, prayer and Bible reading affect every area of the person's life. How they dress, handle themselves at work, their conversation, character, and conduct are rooted and passed down. And this should be a characteristic of all followers of Jesus Christ. Okay? <clears throat> a godly mother or a godly father, a godly parent, a godly grandmother, a godly grandfather. Again, we live in a society where grandparents are raising to children today. And again, they are a great influence on their grandkids today. But they learn to trust God, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust God, trust God in every need. Learn to be content in all situations. Realize that God supplies. The greatest thing that children, grandchildren, Young people today can see is followers of Christ, whether it be a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, is to see prayer, is to see, to see a godly person praying and coming before the Lord. <clears throat> because that parent is praying and reading the Word of God and meditating on Scripture, they know and trust God's promises. They are confident that he will meet their needs, whatever physical or material, emotional needs they are. Young people need to see that today. We need to be, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be that role model. We need to be the ones that the young people are going to see today. You know, it's so sad. We don't see many young people in the uh, churches today. You know, and as I always share, we lost. Uh, a couple of generations, the 20s and 30s, we lost them. We need to pray. We need to let God, let them see God working in our own personal lives. <clears throat> Instead of focusing on what we lack, we 
Focus on our what we do have and how God does provide for us. Whether he provides much or little, we know that he will take care of us. A godly parent is generous. Even if they have little to share, they're willing to offer it to others. It says in Hebrews 13, 16, do not forget to do good and to share for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. <clears throat> Sometimes a godly mother is generous. Generosity comes in the form of encouragement. We need that today. Today there is always people putting people down and this and that. We need encouragement to lift, lift others up. Her desire is to offer words to build up rather than to tear down. Her example of generosity towards her family as well as to others sets a pattern for her children to follow in her footsteps. Praise God. That's what's needed today. Godly parent is obedient to God. It's obedient to God. Obedience honors God and is profitable for us as well as for her children and her husband. She understands that she is obeying an all-powerful, omniscient, loving God. A godly mother can trust. She understands there is no need to worry because she knows that her Heavenly Father will take care of her. And that's in generalized with a godly parent, godly grandmother, godly aunt, uncle, in general. She knows her heavenly father, they know their heavenly father can handle any situation. <clears throat> you know, even in times of need, we, they could sleep with the without being troubled, without being anxious, without being struggling. It says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Giving your worries, giving your struggles to the Lord, being content in any and all situations. We learn that in Scripture by the Apostle Paul, all the struggles that he went through. But see, today in our world, what do our young people see? This is what they need to see. Again, referring to mothers, a godly mother who trusts and obeys God gives her home an atmosphere, welcome and love. The mother in the home sets the atmosphere. They say that the mother in the home is like the Holy Spirit of the home sets that atmosphere of calmness and contentment. Even in difficulties at home cannot disrupt the peaceful atmosphere from the power of the Holy Spirit that works through a mind. Praise God. Godly character, whether it be a mom, whether it be a father, whether it be a grandma, a grandfather, an aunt and uncle, godly character, is someone who is forgiving. Forgiving. This is essential for every follower of Jesus Christ. And it's clearly taught in the Bible. Those who refuse to forgive live in stress and tension. And it soon overflows into the home. And this is where you see the anxiety. Forgiveness is a vital part of family because the close relationships result in misunderstandings and conflict. However, living in difficult person with a difficult person is no excuse for having an unforgiving spirit. Forgiveness can restore peace and eliminate stress. Just like we read in scripture this morning, Ephesians 4:32. It says, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. And you know, 
as I shared as many times as I through this message this morning, we know the Word of God. We read the Word of God. Living the Word of God. That's what our culture needs to see. That's what young people need to see today. Living out the Word of God. We all have stress. We all have anxiety. But see, through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in every believer, the Bible says we can have peace. What's Jesus said? In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Peace I leave with you, not that the world offers. My peace I give to you, he said. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The words of Jesus Christ. Okay. And see, what's going to turn our world around, our country around, is Christians truly following Jesus Christ. Amen. Not just knowing the word, not just reading the word, but living the word. Amen. And see, I know myself, I studied Bible for many years. I can quote the scriptures, know a lot of them by heart, but it's different to live it. To live it. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit and letting the Spirit work in and through you. And again, everyone, as I share today, not living, being controlled by the circumstances. Not living and being controlled by the circumstances. But living and understanding that a loving God is in control. That's the most important thing. He's in control. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And he has the best for you. And we're living in a time more than ever where young people need to see Christ in the lives of those who say they are followers of Jesus. They need to see it. It's not just reading scripture and knowing a verse here and there, but living that life. Living that life. A godly mother has an attitude of persistence. When something needs to be accomplished, she knows what is required and keeps working until it's finished. Instead of waiting for someone else to do it, she jumps up and completes the task. Persistence applies to relationships as well as work. It's easy to stop communicating or walk away from difficult situations, but a godly mother or godly father or godly grandmother, godly grandfather, doesn't give up. They keep loving even when things are not going as desired. Keep up. Instead of giving up in the discouragement, they turn to God in prayer, asking for a pure heart and a forgiving spirit and coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, please help me with this. I give it to you. I need you to carry me through. That's Christian growth. Characteristics of a godly godliness is total dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on self. Not relying on self. We live in a world today. I can handle it. I got this. I got to figure it out. That's not of God. That's of self. Godliness. I don't have this. I don't understand this. Lord, I need your help. Help me carry this out. Help me get through this, Father. I'm depending on you. I don't know where to turn. <coughs> Give me the strength. 
but all week you were strong. A good example of this could be a mother of a young child. No matter how many times she must get up in the middle of the night to care for that child, she does. God has placed within her heart a mother of willingness to do whatever her child needs. A godly mother faces life demands without fussing, <coughs> nagging, groaning, comparing her situation with other circumstances. She's determined to be the person God wants her to be. And again, this is Mother's Day message, but it pertains to all those who are followers of Jesus Christ. Godliness is one who is a servant. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served, and give his life for a ransom for many. Jesus himself came here to serve. Jesus himself loved you and I so much, he came here to serve and then go to a cross so that you and I could have everlasting life to live with him for eternity. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. person growing in godliness, whether it be a mother, a father, or a grandfather, a grandmother, an aunt, an uncle, a brother, a sister, the servant attitude doesn't live for themselves, but for others. They serve their family in a variety of ways, remembering that they're following Christ's footsteps. They don't seek reward or serve only when it's convenient or they feel like it. They realize that serving their family, whoever it may be, is serving the Lord. We are to do everything to glorify God. Everything that we do, we are to do to glorify God. Praise God. This is how Others see Christ in us. A godly parent lives an orderly life. Moms. For a family life to be smoothly, there must be organization, especially when children are in school. Because there are schedules to keep and tasks to complete. Without order in a family, there's confusion, frustration, anxiety, tension, and stress. Everything's all over the place. It has to be order. And again, that comes from the parent seeking the guidance from the power of the Holy Spirit. I share. A godly parent is an encourager. As I share. Children today need encouragement. There's so much going on out there today. So much negativity. So much negativity. Young people today trying to fit in. Want to be part of. Want to be accepted. And they'll do whatever it takes to be accepted and go down the wrong path. At least they're being accepted. It's not it. They need the family members, whether it be a mom, a dad, a grandfather, a grandmother, brother, or a sister, to be an encourager. <clears throat> to make them feel loved, to tell them they have value. God has a plan and a purpose for their lives, for each of us. That plan is to glorify him. 
He's equipped each of us with talents, with skills, with ability to glorify Him, to give Him the credit, to glorify Him, to praise and honor Him. A godly parent loves unconditionally. Their love is not conditionally based on behavior of the children, her husband or wife. By her example, she demonstrates how they can, she can love at all times. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. If you're here today and you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're an aunt, your uncle, or just a friend, someone, what godly characteristic traits do you want to develop in your life or model for young people today? For young people today. You know, none of us are perfect. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But today in our culture, as I close this morning, we have to have a strong look at the family today. If the family is destroyed, where goes the culture? What makes up a body of believers? Family. If the family is destroyed, how can a culture prosper? They can't. As followers of Jesus Christ, Again, we're not perfect. But we need to come out from among them and be separate. We need to come out from among them and be separate. And see, as we walk with the Lord, that will cause people to ask questions. How is it that you don't do this or you don't do that? It's not me, it's Christ that lives in you. It's the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about, the Holy Spirit? Yeah. I gave my life to Christ. I got saved. What are you talking about? What's saved? What's that all about? What's that all about, being saved? Well, God revealed to me that I was a sinner. You know, in the Bible it says... For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God revealed to me through the power of the Holy Spirit. That individual may say, can, they, can the Spirit come into my life? Absolutely. Let me share with you. See everyone, this is what it's all about. <coughs> Basically, like, why are we here? We're here. Once we got saved, we are here to grow, learn, and know. And be the light in the darkness. We're on a mission, everyone. Sure that we just had a missionary rally here. Praise God. So you know what I share? And I share it all the time. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a missionary. And you're on a mission. And we need to really pray and seek the Lord to bring young people back. All people, but a lot of young people. Maybe. Get them generations that are lost, the 20s and 30s. Come to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. 
And as I close in prayer, God bless mothers. Amen. God bless mothers. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you born again? Has there been a time in your life where you understood that you were a sinner? And it didn't come from you. That's the first work of the Holy Spirit. The acknowledging that you are a sinner. If you have, ask for forgiveness, ask Jesus to come into your life. This is what Jesus calls being born again. Today, listen to me everyone, this is so critical. If you're a parent here, a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandfather, a great-grandmother, a great-grandfather, an aunt, an uncle, do you have family members that are lost? Do you have family members that are not saved? You need to pray and witness to them. But you want to know how you can first witness to that? By them seeing Christ in you. Not by what you say. Let them see. Let them see. So desperate today. We can't just be knowing this. Knowing that. It's walking in it. And see, when they see you really walking in it, that's going to have them start to ask the question. Praise God. I just want to share to you as I close. I praise God for my daughter Bella. She said to me last night, Dad, will you pray for me? And I said, absolutely. I said nothing. She said it to me. That's what it's about. They need to see Christ in you. That's what's going to make a change in this world. Again, everyone, don't be religious. You know, we had a saying when I lived in Little Rock, Arkansas. Don't play Christian. We used to say that in Arkansas. Live it. Walk in it. That's what's going to change our culture, our country. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you for your word today, Lord God. I praise and thank you for all the mothers, Lord, that are here today. I pray, Father, for mothers that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they would come to know Christ, Father God, and so needed, Lord. I pray for parents today, moms, dads, grandfathers, great-grandmothers, great-grandfathers, aunts, uncles, brothers and sisters, families that come to Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, if there's one here who does not know Jesus, today would be that day of their salvation. To accept what Jesus did on the cross. Realize they're a sinner. And ask Christ to come into their lives. Your word tells us. 2 Corinthians 5.17. That we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you Jesus. 
Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And I pray for blessings upon all those who came out today. And again, all the moms, blessed are they. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.